to. Oftentimes we see pressure, we say see pressure, attack pressure. Throw it into where faster than he wanted to. Oftentimes we see pressure, we say see pressure, attack yeah, pressure. Throw I've, it I've into where this faster clip. than he wanted to. Oftentimes we see pressure, we say see pressure, attack pressure. Throw it into where faster than he wanted to. Oftentimes we see pressure, we say see pressure, attack pressure. Throw it into Well, good morning, good people. Mark Holmes here with my buddy Cowboy Joe Boo, as well as Joe Bear in the house. And as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. So let's get open for business here and let's wake up those football gods. Wow. So here we are. It is Friday already. What? Oh, my goodness. We were live streaming last night. You know, we've been doing football because the football season comes by. It takes too long to get here and it's gone too quickly. So we've been live streaming every day that there's football. We'll be live streaming tomorrow because there's games tomorrow. And of course, Sunday and Monday, you know, this is great because we got football just about every day, but it's also a precursor to the off season. There's not much time left. And so we were watching last night and it was really cool because Philly 500, shout out to Philly 500. You know, my son has just grown so much. He has literally gone to a whole nother level here in life. You know, he's become a celebrity and things. He is literally, you know, the, the, he's got Warren Moon warning up for him. He's got Warren Moon speaking, and then he's following Warren Moon and stuff. And he graced us with his present last night where he's worried. He's worried. And they got bad news in Philly because they found out Geno Smith is, is playing. Now, I'm going to say, you know, I've been in the Pacific Northwest. I've been in that stadium. The Seattle Seahawks are on a four-game lose streak, and they need the win to try and get back into the playoff conversation. They need it bad. They need to try and keep pace with Green Bay and um, Minnesota. They need this win. And I'm going to say being in Seattle is like being inside of a jet engine. Now, some Cowboy fans are like, why are you talking about the Eagle? I don't care about the Eagles. Talk about the Cowboys. Listen, the Eagles are our enemy. Philly 500's not. But the Eagles are. And we have to understand what happens with them affects us. If we go in there tomorrow, oh, excuse me, on Sunday, and take care of Buffalo, it puts that much more pressure on the Eagles for Monday night where it's beginning to become a pressure cooker. And here's where it's really getting interesting because it was great insight listening to Philly last night that apparently the, uh, the analytics uh, department helps to make the game plans. And Jeffrey Lurie's son is their cat boy, so to speak. And now Howie Roseman is kind of uh, a little bit into the mix with the coaching and things, you know, and, you know, he's opining for Doug Peterson as coach and looking at this and literally thinking that the sky is falling. So here's what supposedly is happening in Philly right now. They've had a players only meeting this week. Let me say I don't remember too many 10 and three teams having to have a players only meeting. That's typically when you're kind of rock bottom and you, you really just, you know, I'm trying to save my job, man. I need you to play better. You don't usually hear teams that are going to be playoff teams having players only meeting, but the players only meeting centered around Jalen hurts turnover issues this season. Oh, did you know that Jalen Hurts has had a turnover issue this year? They don't play it up like they did with Dak Prescott last year. No, they don't. They don't. In fact, you've got, you know, Dan Orlowski. Can take numbers and skew them any, any way we want. We often can take numbers and we'll fit them into the narrative that we want to try and paint. And I probably am guilty of this. Yeah that they basically will shade shit on people to make some people look like shit and other people shine, but be that as it may. But turnovers have been an issue with the Eagles, and you look at 
all their big players ended up turning the ball. Three turnovers, three fumbles last week against us. Also, A.J. Brown, who seems to have been a little bit, you know, earlier in the season, you can see him being more and more vocal on the sideline. He's approached the head coach, expressing his frustration with Hurts. In response to the team is now forcing Hurts to practice falling down and not turning over the football. They literally, there's a clip where they literally have they got the broom, they're hitting, they're trying to hit him with the ball, and he's literally dropping to the ground just to hold on to the football. He's having to learn how not to fumble. That's not good. That's not good. In other news, Cam Newton set off a firestorm with his comments about game managers. He kind of walked that back some. I don't know. And here's the thing that you got to understand about media and social media. There's no such thing as bad publicity. Sometimes you say some off-the-wall crazy shit to get a response. And I don't know if that's what Cam Newton was doing because now everybody's going through and watching him, you know, getting hits. You're getting a boost. You're like, what the hell? You you see the outfit he was wearing when he said all this. You know, all this is getting you to say, what the, what what, what was that? You're going to go through and watch more. Is is this how he does this shit all the time? So he responded to that video saying this. Game manager is not a negative connotation. What do you mean by game manager? The definition of managing player is a player who has the ability to make the right play at the right time, protecting the football at all costs. When I think about the ultimate elite game managers, Peyton Manning, Drew Brees, Tom Brady, game changers and game managers is not something where I'm saying this person is not physically capable of making some great plays. I'm not saying that, or am I not saying that they are not good players? There are really only three, potentially five game changers, three to potentially five game changers in the NFL right now. Aaron Rodgers, Lamar Jackson, uh, Josh Allen, Joe Burrow, and Pat Mahomes. Okay. There you have it. So the guys he said were game managers. He's not putting any of those in the category. And I will debate the idea. Actually, I, actually, here's what I'll say. I'll say Josh Allen is a game changer both ways. Because he can lose a game. Because by his definition, is a guy who makes the right plays at the right time and doesn't turn over the football. And Josh Allen is one of those ones that sometimes does not make the right play at the right time and will turn the ball over. But that's cool. You know, that's cool. Uh, You know, whatever you say. In the meantime, we're kind of fine-tuning the weather forecast for Buffalo. And here's what we got. 48 to 44. It's not going to get anywhere close to freezing. 48 is the high, 44 is the low with light rain. We don't know if that's light rain all day. If that's going to be light rain during game time, light rain before game time, light rain after game time. They're just calling for light rain in 48 to 44 temperatures. That's cool. Light rain is not soaking rain. But Jake Ferguson, you know, here's where it's kind of cool to me because I think about what we have had happen to us. We've killed the Cowboys about the draft. They said, Cowboys draft sucks. Well, we will find out in years to come because, you know, people were kind of looking at last year's draft and kind of like, meh, it's not that great. But you see where all those guys are playing valuable times. I mean, Deron Bland was drafted last year. You know, Jake Ferguson was drafted last year. These guys are key on this roster right now. Uh, Tyler Smith was drafted. We may look at last year's draft and say, this is the one that, this is like some of the 90s drafts that literally got the Dallas Cowboys the talent that they need to become a great team and maybe a dynasty. Maybe it'll be the same thing for next year with some of the guys we have. Because, see, here's the thing. When we drafted Mozzie, 
we looked at this and said, we're going to need a guy right now to play on that defensive line. But we've been fortunate because Hankins has played incredible all season long for us. Our defensive front has played so good that you haven't needed that rookie to be the game changer. See, you look at Philly. Philly needed Jalen Carter to come in right now and play great. And even though he has, they still ain't making no hay. They still got problems. We have an elite front of rotation of guys and haven't needed Mozzie Smith. Now we do because Hankins is hurt. And this is his opportunity to say, yeah, I'm a first-round draft pick. I've been able to sit, watch, I'm healthy, I'm ready to go. I just need to be able to get off the ball and understand that I'm not playing a read-and-react defense anymore. I'm playing a gap defense and need to get up off the ball quicker. Same thing with Schoonmaker. We draft a schoolmaker thinking we need a punch at tight end right now. I'm happy that he doesn't have to be the lead dog as a rookie because Jake Ferguson is playing so well. So, yes, we would love to have an immediate impact from our rookies. But the reality is, is the team has a lot of players that are really good that you don't necessarily need that at the moment. It's not to say you don't want it. It's not that you don't say you want it to be another guy to put into there to rotate to destroy people. But they have to be able to have the opportunity. And them having the opportunity means you're taking a Hankins off the field or you're taking a Jake Ferguson off the field. And that's where we are. But Jake Ferguson understands, hey, he's practicing putting his hands in buckets of ice water and things and soaking footballs and all that stuff because he's trying to get ready mentally for cold, wet conditions. And this team, you know, people will say, well, yeah, same old Cowboys. I'm going to say that this is a different Cowboys team. This team usually would find ways to lose when they should have won. And I'm going to say that was, you know, some of the games that we've had. Instead of us folding and losing and having turnovers at the wrong time or stupid penalties, we're not making those mistakes. And you can't, you can't hold the son responsible for the sins of the father. This is a different Dallas Cowboys team as every year was. Dak Prescott, he wasn't the quarterback of all 29 years. Mike McCarthy, he wasn't the coach of all 29 years. But let's take the microcosm of what we've got now, where it seems that we have made some changes that are beneficial. That maybe looking at the Chargers getting mollywopped by the Raiders, the guy that everybody thought was the genius and the reason that, oh, the only reason that Dak Prescott is scoring points, Kellen Moore, he's a genius. He's one of these young gun coaches, you know, hot candidate that should be a head coach, you know, as opposed to the old guy, Mike McCarthy. But Mike McCarthy, when he got here, knew, I can't just say I'm going to start calling plays because this is the favorite son of Jerry Jones. I got to let this guy fail, which is why Mike McCarthy always would say, Kellen Moore does the installs. The guy that does the installs calls the plays. When shit hit the fan, it's this guy, this, this guy that you wanted, he's calling the plays. He, that ain't me. That ain't me. But then when he got his chance, he took the reins and let you know, you should have had me doing it all along. It makes you wonder where we would be had we had Mike McCarthy instead of Kellen Moore for those years. Unfortunately, we can't go back in time and change that. But you look at now how the Chargers have completely imploded, how the offense is just horrendous. And even though Dan Orlowski believes that Justin Herbert is a game changer, before he got injured, they were only averaging 21 points a game. We now realize Kellen Moore was holding back Dak Prescott. They've rectified that. You've got an offense that now understands that Kayvon Turpin, we can use him in certain situations for speed. That's a guy that Kellen Moore didn't want on the field. They understand that running Tony Pollard up the middle, first down, second down, 
is not a way to get ahead. And the trick plays that we used to run that only seemed to trick us and put us after we're moving the ball well, we're not doing those stupid shit. We're, we're just not doing those things. And in the NFL, the difference between winning and losing is so small that a couple of bad plays will kill you. We've understand that the best thing is with this West Coast or Texas Coast offense is getting the ball out of the quarterback's hands quickly. People used to go through and say, oh, Mike McCarthy, he's simplifying the offense because Dak Prescott's not bright enough to have a complex one. No, he simplified it because he understood defenses are faster at getting at the quarterback. That you want to hurt them and protect your quarterback, protect your investment, you got to get the rid of the ball right now and your slow developing routes and things are killing you. We've learned these things, and that's why I say this is a different team. Now, we've got a big game this weekend. Everybody is still on the bandwagon because there's perception and then there's reality that Josh Allen, that all of a sudden they've turned the season around. I don't know that they've turned the season around. I don't know that the overtime loss that they had to the Eagles was them playing great or that the Eagles are just not that good a team. Because the commanders did the same thing to them, had to go to overtime, and they lost just like the Buffalo Bills. And I can't look at the commanders and say, that's a good team. And some people might say, well, that was just, you know, uh, that happens. It's a division game. It happened twice. They should have lost in the fourth quarter in the second game. So I don't know if the Buffalo Bills are really that good. You know, people will say, well, hey, you know, they, they beat Kansas City. You mean Kansas City that wide receivers can't hold on to the football? And even with them not holding on to the football, it took a messed up call by the officials to keep from Kansas City from winning? That they only scored 20 points against them? Are we saying that Kansas City is the Super Bowl team that they were last year? I don't think so. So I don't know what Buffalo really is. I know Stefan Diggs has not been having a very good season. It's been forever since he's had a 100-yard game or a touchdown. Josh Allen is doing Josh Allen things, turning over the football every freaking week. Every week. I think nine games straight leads the NFL in turnovers, not just this year. But since 2018. So I don't know. But I'm just a guy who's in his basement. I'm actually going to listen to some people who've actually been there. Unlike Dan Orlowski, who is a journeyman who wasn't even good enough to be considered a game manager because he couldn't manage the game. I'm going to listen to Steve Smith from game day. Let's listen to this. Let's. So the NFC playoff picture switched around a bunch last week. A new one seed, a new two seed, a new leader in the NFC East. San Francisco clearly holding the tiebreaker over both the Philadelphia Eagles and the Dallas Cowboys, who Mm -hmm. are now the two seed in the NFC. The Cowboys travel to take on the Bills. The Cowboys have won five straight games, all of them by 30 plus points. Dak Prescott is locked in. The offense is... I'm going to stop here for a second because what she's about to say is another case of them moving the goalposts against the Cowboys. Another case of them moving the goalposts against the Dallas Cowboys. For the longest time, they kept saying the Dallas Cowboys haven't beaten a winning team, even though we did beat the Jets that were 1-0 and when we played them. I get that, that, that the Jets have not been good all season, although they have won some games and been up and down. They did beat the Eagles. Um Then, of course, we beat the Seattle Seahawks, and then, of course, now they're back at 500, and they say, yeah, well, they're not really a winning team and all. So that that one didn't really count, and now you beat the Eagles. Here's the new response. Moving as well as it has all season long, but they have not beaten a winning team on the road yet. This is a... Have not beat a winning team on the road. You know what's going to be... You know what's going to happen... Let's say the Cowboys beat the Buffalo Bills on Sunday. I bet you the new talking point will be the Dallas Cowboys haven't beaten a team on the road with a winning record that was wearing their color rush jerseys. They just just haven't done that. 
do you understand the, the frustration that we get when we see and hear these things? When the Miami Dolphins, when the Miami Dolphins have not beaten a single team at all with a winning record, that every game that they have played against a team with a winning record, they have failed. They have lost miserably. Nobody brings those, them up. Nobody brings them up. A big test for them to go into Buffalo in December with everything on the line. So, Steve, will yeah. the Bills be able to slow down Dak Prescott? <clears throat> well, technically right now, I'm, I'm, I'm looking online just over my, my statistics. You're just Googling things? Okay. No, 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 no. I'm going on my pro football focus okay. um, information. I was look, what I'm looking at, <clears throat> Raz, uh, Douglas. Douglas was lined up on Travis Kelsey a lot. Mm -hmm. Now I'm thinking, in my mind, I'm going, okay, they have C.D. Lamb. Mm -hmm. Who's going to cover C.D. Lamb? There you go. Who's going to cover Fer Ferguson? Mm -hmm. Who's going to cover uh, Brandon, Brandon Cook? Yeah. They have so, the Dallas Cowboys have so many guys, so many weapons. Brandon Cooks has been a guy traditionally with his speed. He runs full speed. He runs a lot of fast routes. So he's normally not in on third down, but they've developed him and seen that he can contribute. Michael Gallup has been reduced a little bit to where he's playing more as the number three wide receiver. So you're seeing bigger impact. He's finally 100% healthy. And then you show him Ferguson right here, his impact, what he can do. And the reason I'm saying I was Googling all this uh, or looking at my pro football focus is I'm trying to figure out who is going to line up at some point when they are man to man. Mm. When you have all of these guys, Ooh. when I look at the Dallas Cowboys Speaking. defense, I look at Stephon Gilmore, mm -hmm. I look at um, Blaine, all of these guys, Lewis, they have so many guys secondary in the secondary that can line up against the Buffalo Bills and their, their wide receivers, Diggs. Diggs is eliminating himself because by the offensive coordinator, mm -hmm. Joe Brady, because they don't really run a traditional uh, run and pass. He, he gets to freelance. And so Josh is holding the ball a lot of times. So this is just freelance, me just freelance talking. I'm just sitting there. When I take my notes and I look at games, I go, why will they win and why will they lose? And for me, I'm sitting there and I look at the Dallas Cowboys, I believe they have offensive firepower just like the Buffalo Bills. But what I don't question is why and what does the Buffalo Bills have on defense outside of their defensive line mm -hmm. that really makes me scared that is a mismatch for the Dallas Cowboys. And I believe the mismatch in this game has to be the Buffalo Bills secondary against the wide receivers. Mm -hmm. Then you add a good running game. You got Turbin. He can make some explosive plays. All of a sudden, this game can get out of hand very quickly because mm. of the lack of consistency of why the 7-16, and 16, the Buffalo Bills, are in a position they're in right now. That's how I'm looking at this game. Mm. I will say this. Uh, talking about this Bills defense uh, going up against this, this Cowboys skill group offensively, yes. mm -hmm. uh, I'm worried about nickel. For nickel defense for my Buffalo Bills, right? Teron Johnson, he's the slot. He's the slot corner. They play nickel defense most of the time. And what happens is when teams run the football out of nickel, okay, he's clearly in the line of sight. He's clearly where they're trying to get big guys on him, and it messes him up when he has to go man in those special situations when they do blitz. So I'm looking at nickel and wondering mm. if my Buffalo Bills defensively well, can handle. You're talking Kyle. about him. He was targeted by Rasheed Rice, targeted twice, two receptions, 34 yards. 17 yards cat, uh, reception. Uh, McKinney, his catch. Mm -hmm. uh, Kadarius Tony, when he actually caught it, two catches, right? Uh, Richie James, one catch. So he was targeted six times, three receptions, 41 yards. Now that's not a huge number, but we also know about the Kansas City Chiefs. Yeah. Those were passes were dropped. Passive disconnect. Things were done that we know the Cowboys will not do that. Mm. They're wide receivers are consistently better. Mm -hmm. So we know if they get six targets with the Dallas Cowboys, 
Those boys are catching that football. They're not having 41 yards. Well, the Bills, they certainly have mm. playmakers that can slow down Dak Prescott on that defense. You Do have they? Ed Oliver, who's having a career year in yes. terms of sacks. He's a Texas native. He Von always Miller. plays it's time the for Cowboys you to wake well. Up, baby. Leonard Floyd, Come in on. his first season with Buffalo, oh. he's having a great year. And then you have also um, Leonard or uh, Gregory Rousseau. Rousseau, who's finally he's healthy playing. again. And he's you can huge. tell, by the way, yeah. that he's playing. So, <laughs> But you talked like, about everybody in the front. Seven, mm -hmm. but I'm nobody still in the back talking end. Talking about the secondary that helps covers up things in the back. No. Though. You know what? <laughs> that's that's what that's what Philly's that's what Philly's philosophy is. <laughs> uh, the 49ers as well, and sometimes what happens? Head coach Brandon Stale. There you go. Sometimes what happens? You get your teeth kicked in because if your offensive line plays well, like the Cowboys' offensive line is, and they can't get to the quarterback. You ain't got nobody covering playmaking wide receivers. All right, good people. We've gone a little overtime here today, but it's all good. We appreciate each and every one of you guys. And uh, we'll be doing our live stream at 9 o'clock Eastern, and we'll keep you up to speed on everything that is the Dallas Cowboys. Our coach here, and as always, I want to thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. I got to say.